Thomas on the topic Secure and IV Access, what is beginners? Good morning and a warm welcome to everybody gathered here for Win Conclave from Rajagiri Anesthesia Department. As you all know, um, pediatric IV insertion is a challenge. We realize that babies have small veins which are mobile. Not only that, anatomical variation which we see. We also have babies who are plump and where the subcute fat is quite a lot due to which it is difficult to see or even to palpate. Why do we need to cannulate? Repeated blood sampling, intravenous fluid administration, administration of medications, chemotherapy, TPN, uh, in, in intravenous blood, blood products, and during radiological procedures, contrast has to be administered. There are a variety of cannula which we have cannulas which are pen-like models, wings or with a part where we can inject and white type models. We also have different sizes of scalp wings. The catheters are color coded, the 26 gauge which is one of the smallest to even 14 gauge. In children, we use usually up to 18 gauge, and that also determines the flow rate. The smallest cannulas give around 10 mils per minute, and the 18 gauge allows around 85 mils per minute. We also have cannulas with integrated three ways. We can see the parts of the IV cannula here. We have to be very much knowledgeable about the anatomy and only then we would be more successful. It is important not to keep probing without seeing because we may be harming or puncturing arteries and even damaging nerves. Materials required, the IV cannula, cotton swabs, adhesive tape, spirit, kidney tray scissors, IV tubings and IV stand and thus we have to maintain strict asepsis. What are the tips and tricks for IV cannulation? We shall just go through one by one. We have to introduce ourselves when the child is a little bigger, explain the procedure, stay calm and be prepared, get their confidence Assess for needle phobia and observe all infection control measures and you assess the way. We have to feel rather than look, ask the patient whether they had any previous experience and use appropriate cannula size. And we have to realize for what we are going to use that cannula on which will determine the size. And also the technique, it has to be in the non-dominant hand first. The vein selection, the patient should be prepared and as far as possible sedated. Start with distal veins and work proximally. Hand should be lower than the patient's heart. Apply the tourniquet correctly. Making the vein more visible. Gravity is your friend. We must flick or tap the vein, feel the vein. Fist clenching and releasing when it's a bigger, a bigger child and use of multiple tunicae whenever possible. We have to use alcohol swabs, clean vigorously and widely and if possible use a vein finder. Stabilize the vein, insert the IV catheter directly atop the vein with the bevel up, make the shot at a 15 to 30 degree angle and feel for resistance. The flashback, the first flashback, you will see, but don't try to insert the catheter immediately. After the first flashback, insert a little bit more. Proceed slowly. Don't be in a hurry. Release the tunicate first 
and then start the IV line. As you know, it is a difficult task. We have to watch the developmental stage of the child and we should be in a neutral place. Avoid applying restraints as much as possible. Use creative forms of distraction as Madam has already talked about in the last lecture. We should just go through a video presentation on the best method to take a ventral IV cannulation. being tied proximal to the insertion site in a single hand release loop configuration. We apply traction to the skin to stabilize the vein. Counter traction is also applied and this is very useful to make the vein more prominent. Keeping the bevel up at 15 to 25 degree angle, we insert directly on the vein. Once through the skin, the angle of the needle is dropped and it is aligned near parallel to the skin. And we advance slowly, steadily. Just be calm and proceed slowly. There's a little bit of uh, disruption in this video, so sorry about that. Step four, advance slowly and we first see the flashback. And If you haven't got the flashback, you just come out a bit and again proceed. At a deeper depth. The second continuous flashback establishes that the catheter tip is through the vessel wall and that will help us 
prevent shearing. Some real life clips. I know most of you are adept at this. Now we have to withdraw and go at a slightly more depth if we haven't hit the vein. So once we have passed through, it is for us to uh, fix the catheter in place and continue with the IV line. Psychological impact, as we all know, little children, wherever they are from, they would be very upset if we are going to keep poking them. There are a lot of numbing agents. The Embla cream, eutetic mixture of local anesthetics, which is a combination of lidocaine and trilocaine. Now, uh, we have to retain it on the part we have, we are planning to numb for about an hour. We also have newer agents, which are cryogenic agents, which on spray numbs the area within three to five seconds. It is suitable for babies, children, adults, and the elderly, and allows for painless injection. In obese and edematous patients, we find it, we will find it more difficult, and it will be wonderful to use vein finders and illuminating equipment. Ultrasound guided IV cannulation is more into vogue now because most of the hospitals have ultrasound facilities. Short axis versus the long axis approach. We should be cognizant of compression, otherwise we won't be able to see the vein easily. The different types of IV cannula fixators which are now available. Different types of vein finders are available especially useful for children who are having dark skin tones, obese people, and patients who undergo many diagnostic or intravenous therapeutic procedures, people who are burn victims or where there has been multiple uh, IV access taken due to chemotherapy or in case of drug abuses. Devices for peripheral vascular access, the vein entry indicator device, it's acoustic pressure monitoring, trans illumination vein light, the vein finder where it uses infrared light, the near infrared technology. There was a study where three such devices were looked into the vein viewer flex, the vein viewer, and the vein sight, and all of them had good visibility. This is what you see when you use a near infrared vein viewer over the distal parts of the body with the near infrared technology. Gadgets using infrared and near infrared, multiple are available now in the market. 3D goggles, vein finders. We have the OptiVein, which is very handy. Vein seek apply ap application which we can take onto our mobiles. Now we also have robotic IV catheter insertion, portable robo for autonomous venipuncture. What are the complications of IV cannulation? Local systemic infection, phlebitis, thrombus, air embolism, accidental insertion into an artery. Bleeding if disconnected and extravasation. It is really appalling to see children with such gory hands and legs. Now, when we require an access, 
and we are unable to go ahead with it. We have to determine what is our plan B. If the child is stable, we can try an EJV. Otherwise, we can try central venous axis using ultrasound. Or if the patient is highly unstable, go ahead and take an intraocious axis so that we can buy time. Femoral vein using ultrasound. This is a hockey stick probe that we are seeing here. Optimize the leg position. Check for iliofemoral patency. Transfix. Reduce. The, this reduces the chance of arterial puncture. And we can also track the guide wire before dilation. Axis of internal jugular vein. Vein is small and highly mobile. Small children have no neck and so this is very useful. Supraclavicular axis, infraclavicular axis of subclavian vein, USG guided peripheral vascular axis that is found to be even better and more useful than the translumination or the near infrared. This increases the success rate and reduces the time in case of difficult peripheral vascular axis, could reduce the need for central venous axis and even the intraocious. It has been recommended by several societies and most of us should go and learn the ultrasound guided methods. It is useful to keep the baby sedated. Now the take home message here is vascular axis, as we all know, remains a challenge. We have to have a plan B to get vascular axis in stable, urgent situations and in unstable situations. Ultrasound, intraocious devices are useful. Plan on getting an intraocious needle in your theatres, in your emergency departments. Technological progress will help us but manual skills remains most important. Thank you. Thank you so much. The teamwork in our hospital, even the pediatric surgeon comes in. Yeah, he you. is such a big support for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it is mandatory that we should start monitoring the patient before all this is done as far as possible. Especially the sick children, we should be more careful. With. About a decade ago, uh, I published a report where we used OT light camera for IV calibrations. That gives us a magnified view. Excellent. Now we have a lot of uh, other oh, facilities, but being innovative, I think, is really wonderful. And I think in many centers, especially the peripheries, we have to be more innovative. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. For